Hey guys, I'm back at it. Figured I'd show you some funky stuff. And some stuff may seem familiar, but I figured I'd share it nonetheless just because everybody wants to see behind the curtain anyway. So let's just dive right in. Looking at this, basically we just have a thwomp triggering three different things at once. So the thwomp's gonna be hitting this on-off switch, right? And then that's gonna close off the beginning. It's gonna hit this, which has a shellman in it and a buzzy, which is gonna fly up. And as we've seen in other videos, it can knock up something else. So I'm really having it do three different things while we're slowing the player down by having them do these triple hops over here. And then the conveyors just time the speed so that if you're doing full jumps through here, you'll land exactly Exactly where you want to and the interesting thing is it's also about to set up this next contraption here too which is another four hit but it's a slight variation of that in that there's only three shells coming into it let's take a look at that as well one two three four over so there's a few different things happening here Let's remove these saws so we can see behind the scenes. In this variation, the shell that the thwomp had activated up here that flew down here and then landed that we landed on here initially hit this square which dropped this shell. Let's remove this saw. And then that continues this variation where the shell comes over here, pops up and over, knocks the, the shell that we landed on earlier off and continues through here. Now this is still spinning, so it's gonna land in here and the timing is such that it's gonna land after we have another shell coming through here. So the mole we're hitting twice because it's winged, right? So any enemy that's winged has to get hit twice. You can't use a winged buzzy because the winged buzzy will just fly away. So I just put a mole because that's one of the least jank items we can use. The spring here is getting, if we watch here on the spring, one, two, and then three. So we already have the other shell coming over. That's gonna land first. And then this shell comes in last. And then at the same time, we have this blaster that's making its way over. So we have something to jump on because it's not physically possible to make the jump here with the saws. So it looks more complicated than it is. Just another cool contraption. Okay, so there's a few things going on here. This is something that I've made for a collab yet as of this recording. It has not been released yet, but it will be under Tuda's profile. But I did want to dive in here because there's a few different things that are important to look at. This opening sequence uses the seesaw thing, which we've seen before flies over here. Let's remove this. And you're probably wondering, what is this setup over here? In this is a muncher, right? Because it doesn't really matter what's in that. But when two things are on a block at the same time, notice how that, that looks. Now you notice that the Koopa, as it's on the top, it's on the left hand side, right? And it's just gonna stay on the left hand side. So that shell flies up consistently to the left. If I just had without the wiggler there, it could go left, it could go right. But by adding both of them on the block at the same time, you remove any of that jank. See, so now it went that way. So we don't, we don't want that. We wanna keep the wiggler there so that way the shell always pops to the left and Mario can grab that every time. That's a key, key piece of that. So you've seen this mechanic before. We've showed this, demonstrated this before. And then we've also seen with the under the lava over and you have to be careful with the timing. I just kind of made it open-ended. We're doing another four banger, doing a few different things here. We're just gonna watch the entire sequence and then I'll break down the different parts. And then it continues. Another shell delivery system. I think we've spoken about this before, but I like using the muncher on there because it doesn't make an explosion noise. It doesn't shatter the screen. If you have to, you can use the explosions, but if you don't have to, I'd rather not have the explosions and just keep it smooth and quiet. What's going on here? We're delivering the shell through here. Let's remove that for cheese. Let's remove that for cheese. What's in here? That's the Goomba that's following. So when we throw that, the Goomba will have time to go right and then left again, because the Goomba is automatically going to walk to the right when it's dropped, which is good for us because unless it happens to be literally exactly right next to that muncher, which it won't be, then you're somewhere you're gonna land on it somewhere around here. So the timing of this platform is such that 
we want it to appear right when we go over. So you have to tinker with the timing when you deliver under like that, or you can always make Mario do more than one bounce. I only wanted him to do one bounce because I wanted it to be quick and then wrap around, but you can do it many different ways. The shell that we threw is gonna be locked in here, right? So that's gonna stay there. So nothing's gonna change. There's a beetle already here, so that's hit number one. And you'll see the crazy stacks that are going on here. We've seen many different variations of this, and there's lots of ways you can do it. Um, but this is just yet another way of doing it. Um, so I wanted to have a shell coming from the left, a shell coming from the right, a shell coming from above, and then a shell that's already here. So we're maximizing the space. You can try and use blasters, but the timing is very fickle. So you don't want to create any jank with this. You want this to be as consistent as possible. This setup has been very consistent um, and doesn't produce any of the jank. It's also important that you do one of these skull setups here so you don't accidentally land on a muncher that's right next to a shell. So it creates sort of this like down slope for the shell to, to gradually come in. The first one is here, the second one is here, the third one is from above, the last one is from the left. One, two, three, Four. Instead of a blaster, we just have a POW that's coming through here and dropping down. And then for this last part, I just wanted yet another kind of weird delivery system. Um, the shell, this would normally be blue at this time. So I don't like to have at the end of a level just a manual hit it on off, do nothing, and then go up a pipe. I think that's a waste. I think I'd rather incorporate an on off with either something automatically happening or where you're doing one more action to do it in the middle of it because if you're only if you, and, and that that comes down to using odd number or even number on off switches um, so you want to make sure that you know that balances out so by the time you get to cp or the next section you don't really ever have to think about it but i like to make it more interesting so just for the sake of watching this i'm going to delete that so this is kind of funky all right, so I promised uh, Jewmaster87 that I would cover things that go under lava and reappear again. This is this was part of the theme that we did on one of our recent collabs through Elemental Rush, and this incorporates, as you can see, the the thing going in the lava and back under. You could raise the lava here. I chose not to touch the lava because this specifically was a collab that the other section in this same world, not the subworld, the same world would have to be working in the same lava level, so I didn't f touch that. But generally, if you're gonna do things like under lava, you might wanna raise that over here and just have it raised up by one, and then you can hide all the tracks and then make it feel like it's kinda hidden in there. under and over. There's lots of different things you can do with hiding things under lava or poison for that matter. I just think it's really cool and creates a lot of interest, obviously, and then leaving open-ended tracks um, with platforms is super popular. Another hidden track under here where you can see the platform eventually comes up. So we need to keep Mario busy to allow time for the, the platform to come up and over. Okay, here's another collab level that's got some more thwomp antics going on in it. And you're probably looking at this and going, what the heck is going on? Let's take a look at the gameplay first, and then we'll break it down. So I used custom auto scroll for this because I left it open because there's a lot of cool stuff happening here with the thwomp and the shells moving. I felt that custom auto scroll would allow for visually more interesting level because if all the cool stuff that's happening is out of sight, then they're, the player's kind of missing out on what's cool, but because the screen is revealing it before you would even get there, it's just extra awesome so we can see all of it. Let's take a look at this section specifically. What's happening here? So, okay, so the, the Thwomp <clears throat> has a shell that's sitting on it, right? And it's on a parachute. This is the only way I could kind of squeeze in the shell. I would have done a drop thing, but I wanted to keep the ceiling more covered. So it's a tight space. So I had to kind of get creative in doing that. This is a flying bone, but I can't put him on a muncher because there's not enough space and it's already so low. So I, I found that 
if he's just flying, it's okay, because Mario can still reach it, and we can still get two hits, because once we deactivate the wings, he's gonna stay on that spike, so it's okay. The shell explodes on here on the thwomp, hits the spring, flies over here, hit this brick, right, which will disappear as soon as it's hit, which I love using bricks for that, because you can change shell directions, and in, in SMB3 and SMB1, they won't reappear. And in SMW, they'll flip around, but then they'll come back. So you just have to be aware of that. It activates this shellmet, which is being pushed by this spring when it comes up. So the one way in the conveyor here pushes the spring over just a hair. If you notice it, it literally just creeps over just a little bit. So that's really important because you can't just place a side spring here without the conveyor, it won't work. It will, it'll just sit up here. This shell flies over here, knocks into this, and then knocks down here. And then when this shell gets activated, it bounces over and then rolls down here. Okay, so you notice how the shells just kind of fly down here and they create some, some level of interest before we do the spring drop. Okay, Mark, this is for you. Uh, you wanted to see more simple setups. So let's look at the red Koopa, right? Boing, boing. So in SMW, you get the squirt. All right, so let's look at this with the conveyor. Okay, so now we can get some air. Okay, so what happens when we add a side spring into the mix? Okay, so now we got something funky too, in that ghost stacks are great because any enemy that you hit will fall right through them. Okay, so it falls through, we hit the squirt, and then we have a shell to hit. So if you're doing stacks of beetles, you want to make sure it's consistent. Either have no jump or a controlled jump that hits something generally, so you get a consistent outcome every time you do it, um, regardless. So you may have to tinker with you know, the location of some of these things um, to get them consistent, but there's no real secret to it. It's just figuring it out as you go along. Okay, so let's say we incorporated something that involved time, so something that would buy us enough time to get out of a situation. I will share the opening contraption piece, which you may have seen recently from the collab that involves the double buzzy stack right up here in the beginning, just so you can see it. So we hit the buzzy twice, there's a brick involved, and then we hit it, and onward. Again, another easy use of having the on-off switches change the route uh, of the shell, so the first one that comes down will, will be on the red and then bounce up here, hit this brick, break it, and then you'll land over here. By the time the second shell comes down, this shell that we had hit up here will activate that on-off switch. So that'll open that up, and then it'll fly up here to the piranha and knock it up over here. It's pretty cool setup to see them in action. I like using them. I think they're interesting. Moving and flying shells, people are always interested in how those are made, and maybe they overcomplicate it when they think about it, but it's just so cool. I'll always keep making those.